Cambridge Ideas, transforming tomorrow. I've been dancing since I was four. I love to dance. What I do for a living, really, at least when I'm not being a scientist or a bird nerd. My name's Nikki Clayton, and I'm a zoologist come psychologist with a passion for birds. I love their elegance and their grace, their showy displays, and also how they think. Behind that quizzical beady eye lies a brainy bird. Members of the crow family, which includes the jays and the rooks, they have huge brains for their body size. We call them the feathered apes because they're as clever as chimpanzees. I'm particularly interested by their complex social interactions. These birds hide food. And this behaviour is risky because the food can be stolen by onlookers. You dropped three, pal. So these birds go to great lengths to protect their food and they use trickery. So often they'll pretend to hide food or they'll start stashing it around madly to confuse any onlooker. Quite clever, really. Lima. Even more striking are their social skills. They pair for life, so they spend a great deal of their time maintaining relationships. It's really cute when you watch the jays. The male will give worms and other tasty morsels to the female. Is that the story? No, I think Washington's quite... Another example is in the rooks, where Mr and Mrs Rook are incredibly synchronous and coordinated in their movements. It's wonderful to see. So Mr Rook will turn his beak one way and Mrs Rook will follow. And we think that these sorts of behaviour are very important for maintaining and strengthening the partnership, if you like. In some ways, you can see those synchronised movements that the rooks make as, as a form of dancing. Birds spend a lot of time and energy dancing. My favourite example of the blue mannequin that lives in Argentina. These guys spend 90% of their daylight hours dancing. The males dance with other males. It really is like Argentinian tango because that's how tango evolved with men dancing with men in these sort of dancing duels. There's always a competitive edge to it. The same is true in the mannequins. The males dance together in their little jewels and the females look on critically and only choose males that are in these dancing jewels. And what's more, they only choose the experts. I'm collaborating with Rome Dance Company on a new ballet. For ages, I thought of them as two separate paths. I was scientist by day and dancer by night. What this collaboration was giving me is an opportunity to put the two together. This is a ballet inspired by Darwin's ideas about natural and sexual selection. And this is where I'll actually lean on you. I'm so teaching I'm them tango moves inspired by the movements of our feathered friends, the mannequins. So I'm teaching them about the connection and the synchronicity that is absolutely key to tango. That how you look one another in the eyes and all the coordination comes from the chest or the breast feathers. For me, the whole idea of using birds for dance seems such an obvious natural idea there. With all their elegance and grace and beauty, they are natural dancers. So underlying the bird displays is Darwin's theory of how individuals are both similar and yet different. So if you look at the jays, from afar, one looks just like another. Close up, you see that they're very different. They move differently. One's a leader and the other's a follower. It all boils down to sexual selection. 
the reason why the birds spend so much time and energy in courtship. Why males compete and do these duels, which in turn allows females to be so particular in their choice of the good guys. The best answers. Mm -hmm.